Welcome to Amanda's Wellbeing Podcast 5-Minute Food Facts Series. I'm Amanda Hayes, your host, a nutritionist with a passion for well-being. I decided to do this series because there is so much conflicting information available about food and various diets. Some of it is credible and some of it is not. It can be time-consuming, not to mention confusing, to try and sift through the noise and get to the heart of the matter. In this series, I will do all that for you and present factual, reliable information to you in a concise and easy to understand way. I will take a moment to let you know that you can subscribe to my podcast, which includes interviews with experts in the fields of nutrition, physical health and mental health, and this five minute food facts series on YouTube, hit the red subscribe button, or on your favorite podcast app, like iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, Spotify, or Google Podcasts. The content of the 5-Minute Food Facts series is for information purposes only, and it is not intended to replace the advice of your health professional. Today I am going to discuss vitamins and minerals. First, a brief note on their history. The major period of discovery of vitamins began in the early 19th century, and is credited to Polish-born Casimir Funk, I just wanted to say that name, and continued until the mid-20th century. Many people were involved in solving the puzzle of vitamins and minerals, but ultimately it was the chemists who were able to isolate various vitamins and minerals and determine their structures. We often hear about vitamins and minerals, but what exactly are they? Vitamins are organic compounds, that means they contain carbon, and can be broken down or altered by exposure to heat, like cooking, air or acid, etc. There are 13 known vitamins required by the body in small amounts. Four of them, vitamins A, D, E and K, are fat-soluble and can be stored in the liver and fatty tissue of the body. The remaining nine, the B vitamins and vitamin C, are water-soluble and excreted by the body and therefore need to be replaced often. Minerals are inorganic substances also required by the body in small amounts. Minerals include calcium, phosphorus, magnesium, potassium and sodium. You can listen to my 5-minute food fact podcast on salt to learn more about sodium. Minerals required in even smaller amounts but no less important are referred to as trace minerals and these include iron, zinc, and iodine. Each vitamin and mineral plays numerous roles in our bodies, so this podcast is simply a general overview, and I plan to publish a five-minute food fact podcast on each major vitamin and mineral. Vitamins and minerals are found in the foods we eat, but more on that in a minute. What is the role of vitamins and minerals in the body? Vitamins and minerals are essential for normal growth and metabolism. They are classified as essential because the body either cannot synthesize them, like vitamin C, or cannot make enough of them, like niacin, to meet our needs. There are thousands of chemical reactions occurring in every cell of the body all the time. Vitamins and minerals are a vital part of those reactions and so, you can imagine, if our bodies don't have enough or have too much of certain vitamins or minerals, some of these chemical reactions are compromised, and that can impact our health. Some of the most well-known vitamin and mineral functions in our bodies include vitamin A, which is needed for the production of vision pigments. Deficiency can cause night blindness, and is the leading cause of preventable childhood blindness. According to the World Health Organization, 250 to 500,000 vitamin A deficient children become blind every year, mainly in Africa and Southeast Asia. Vitamin C is an important component of collagen and therefore all connective tissue. Deficiency, which is rare these days, causes scurvy. Scurvy was a problem for sailors on long sea voyages where the food supply had no good source of vitamin C. And that is where the term limeys comes from, to refer to British sailors who were given lime juice to prevent scurvy. Folate is an important factor in DNA production. Deficiency is most notably associated with neural tube defects in infants, 
that is abnormalities in the development of the spinal cord which can cause spina bifida. This is a risk when the mother's plasma concentrations are low during the first trimester of pregnancy. Folate supplements are routinely recommended up to and during pregnancy. Vitamin B12 is primarily found in animal products like meat, eggs and dairy. Vegans who avoid all animal products are advised to keep an eye on their vitamin B12 status. Deficiency of vitamin B12 can result in pernicious anemia if uncorrected, eventually leading to neurological problems and nerve damage. Calcium is the most abundant mineral in the body and is essential for the development of healthy bones and teeth, the control of muscle contractions and many other functions. Long-term calcium deficiency contributes to osteoporosis, causing the bones to become brittle and fracture more easily. So where do we obtain vitamins and minerals in our diets? If you eat a variety of foods and do not totally avoid any one food group, it is likely that you will meet all of your vitamin and mineral requirements. Some examples are orange colored fruits and vegetables contains vitamins A and C, Leafy green vegetables contain riboflavin, niacin, B6, folate, vitamin E, vitamin K and calcium. Meat, fish and poultry contain vitamin A, thiamine, riboflavin, niacin, B6, B12, iron, zinc. And whole grains, nuts and seeds contain thiamine, folate and vitamin E. This is by no means an exhaustive list. I'm just trying to show that it is relatively easy to obtain all you need if you eat a wide variety of healthy foods. So, do you need supplements? For the majority of people who eat a healthy and varied diet, living in countries like Australia and do not have any medical conditions that require supplementation, supplements are not really necessary and they have been described by some as expensive urine as the body excretes what it does not need. I've not uncovered scientific evidence confirming that vitamin and mineral supplements make a difference to the health of most people. However, there are some situations in which supplements are recommended, like taking folic acid during pregnancy, or if you have a particular medical condition like celiac disease, which can cause malabsorption problems. Research indicates that vitamins and minerals obtained from food are better for you than those contained in pills. There are a few reasons for this. One is that vitamins and minerals are packaged in food with other elements like phytochemicals and dietary fiber. And all these components work in concert rather than in isolation. Also, Vitamins and minerals contained in food are more bioavailable, that means easier for the body to access and digest than in synthetic or pill form. Deficiencies. I mentioned some vitamin and mineral deficiencies earlier. The most common deficiency worldwide is iron deficiency. This occurs when the body does not have enough iron to produce haemoglobin. Haemoglobin is part of red blood cells that carry oxygen to the body's tissue. According to the medical journal The Lancet, anemia affects 33% of the world's population, with about half of those cases attributable to iron deficiency anemia. I will delve deeper into this issue in another 5-minute food fact podcast about iron. Just like not having enough of certain vitamins or minerals can have health consequences, too much can be toxic. This is especially true of fat-soluble vitamins A, D, E and K. For example, vitamin A toxicity causes a rash, increased intracranial pressure and can lead to liver damage. So how much do we need? I won't read out a boring list of the recommended dietary intake of each vitamin and mineral. Suffice to say, requirements differ according to age and sometimes gender. I will put a link in the fact sheet once I have prepared it to the Australian Nutrient Reference Values that sets out the recommended dietary intakes. Well, I hope that was a useful overview of vitamins and minerals. You can subscribe to Amanda's Wellbeing Podcast on YouTube, hit the red subscribe button, and while you're there, click on the bell to be alerted to when new episodes are available. You can also subscribe on your favorite podcast app 
iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, Spotify or Google Podcasts. And you can follow the podcast on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. Direct links to all social media can be found on the subscribe page of my website at www.amandaswellbeingpodcast.com. If you would like to contact me, you can send me a message via the contacts page on my website. Please feel free to suggest topics you'd like to learn more about and I'll do my best to deliver that to you. Also, and finally, please take a minute to leave a rating on iTunes. It improves visibility and will inspire me to keep researching for this 5-Minute Food Facts series. Thank you for tuning in. Eat well, move well, think well.